On today's high watt soundbite, we're treating acoustics for a killer sounding mix room. Well, the other day I came across a recording that I did back in 2015 that absolutely blew my mind. Check this out. January 28th, 2015, RT60 test, empty room. Okay, so what's the big deal? Well, that was recorded right here, exactly where I'm sitting in 2015, before I started to apply acoustic treatment to this room. Let's check it out one more time. January 28th, 2015, RT60 test, empty room. Well, that recording absolutely inspired me to want to do another RT60 test now that the room is finished. Here's exactly what that result sounds like from this morning. September 17th, 2019. Can you believe that? Check this out. January 28th, 2015. September 17th, 2019. January 28th, 2015. September 17th, 2019. So this has inspired me to want to share some of that experience through that transformation of literally taking one of the very worst sounding rooms that I've ever started with and turning it into just about the best sounding mix room I've ever worked in. Okay, so what is this RT60 test all about? Well, RT60 is defined as the time it takes for a suddenly terminated sound to diminish by 60 dB. That's sort of a fancy way of saying reverb time, okay? Well, the way I performed this RT60 test back in 2015, before I did anything in this room, it was an absolutely empty room, I brought in a loudspeaker and I put it up on a tripod, just right behind where I'm sitting. But right where I'm sitting, I set up a Zoom recorder, you know, that has one of those little stereo mics built in. Well, I set that Zoom up, put it in record, and I started pumping tones through the speaker. So I did the very same experiment. I brought in the same loudspeaker, I put it up on the same tripod, got the Zoom recorder out, essentially set up exactly the same session. You know, and I went ahead and captured a new RT60 just this morning. Okay, so just for perspective, let's listen again to the difference between 2015, pre any acoustic treatment, and this morning, you know, post all treatment. January 28th, 2015, RT60 tests, empty room. September 17th, 2019, RT60 test, finished studio. I've queued this RT60 test to the one kilohertz uh, signal that I sent into the room. Let's listen to 1K playing out through the untreated room first. One more time. Now here's the one from this morning. That new time is definitely under half a second. It's awesome. So just a little bit of background on this space I'm in. So this room was already in existence when we got the house. Somebody had built this as an addition to the home and they built it as a jacuzzi room. So, you know, it's under the back deck. It's got this crazy view over the valley. The whole front side of the studio is all glass. And you could imagine it was set up for a jacuzzi. So the entire room, before I started doing anything acoustically, the whole floor was done in ceramic tile. All of the surfaces were drywall. There was not a single thing on any of the walls except raw drywall. And none of the windows were treated. You know, if you walk into just about any decent sized room that has a ceramic tile floor and not one single absorbing property in that room, they're gonna sound just like this. January 28th, 2015. You know, that is not that hard a stretch now that I kind of describe what this room looked like before I started, right? So I was very much aware that this was gonna be a bit of a challenge. Now, at the very same time, when I got my square out and my measuring tape, I realized some things about this room that were absolutely magical. And I really don't think the designer, whoever built this space, I really don't think they were thinking about sound, but it's like they were some kind of mathematician with the sound department because just by the nature of the location of this space and the, where it is built and, and how it's part of the deck above me, the way that the deck is shaped and so on, 
the builder of this room ended up doing some very strange things. So the result of all these crazy angles in this room, of course, is that there are almost no parallel surfaces and literally almost no standing waves anywhere in the room. So as much as I knew this room had some serious challenges, I also knew that it had some very, very positive things going on. Well, so how did I get from that big, huge, like reverberation tank to what is really ultimately a tight, punchy little room. Well, I literally just overwhelmed this room with all of the materials that I know work well with sound. Talking about wood and fabric and diffusion. So somebody had gone to the extent of putting electric heat under the ceramic tile that was in this room. So I found this amazing flooring guy and he talked me into putting in an engineered wood floor and gluing it directly to the, to the ceramic floor so that we could still utilize that uh, electric heat that was under it. A lot of these wood floors these days are, are, are sort of going in floated, they're calling them. They kind of lay them on this piece of foam and the, the actual wood floor never touches the outsides of the walls. The whole thing is just kind of sitting there. Well, there's one side effect from that type of installation that just really is not very friendly to an audio guy. And that is that that sort of hollow sound that you get from the floor as you walk across it or, or tap on it. Well, man, am I ever glad I listened to my flooring guy because he's like, oh, no, no, we're going to get an engineered wood floor and we're going to glue it down to the ceramic tile. And I'm like, now that sounds cool. Feels like it's on bedrock or something. It's really great. Another thing that I did was there was sort of this ledge that goes all the way around the whole studio and it was just covered in drywall. Well, I decided to go find some ledge stone and ledge stone is a really cool product because not only does it look really cool and, and trim the room up nice, but it sort of acts as a bit of a diffuser, right? Because it's not a smooth surface. You're talking about quite a porous stone and you know and the installation job is in such a way that there's all these different depths and layers right so it sort of acts as a tiny bit of diffusion right well the real transformation in this room obviously came from bass traps and acoustic panels when i sourced all my traps and, and panels i literally ordered what i thought was going to be double the amount that i would need for this room well as you can guess and pretty much see i ended up using all but two panels of this huge order that i brought you know, as soon as I started unboxing all these panels and base traps and bringing them into the room, without them being even mounted, I'm talking about just bringing all of those materials into the room and just leaning them up against walls and putting them on the floor and everything, it transformed the sound radically. Now, I just started to get really excited because I sort of realized that that tank that I had been in was going to vanish and we were going to be able to work with this room, right? So I got really, really stoked. And I absolutely knew that I had to address the, all the glass in the room, right? So I went ahead and finished all the windows with uh, wood blinds. And yeah, I was really surprised and impressed at, at how big an effect these wood blinds had on the sound of the room. I would probably consider using wood blinds in a, in a build without a window. And then finally, I want to talk about the diffuser that's on my back wall, because I really believe that that has a, a big impact in, in why I like the sound of this room so much. You know, as that sound hits that wall and is reflected back into the room, the diffuser's design and, and the idea behind it is that it literally diffuses the sound, right? Those reflections end up coming back very random, and that's sort of what you want. You certainly don't want any standing waves off that back wall. Sure enough, I started my first studio with egg cartons on the back wall, which I don't really think worked, by the way. But, uh, you know, I sort of graduated to this kind of wood diffuser. So I encourage you to start, like, talking to your woodworking friends and seeing if anyone wants to get excited about building a diffuser because I think that it can make a really, really big impact on the sound of your studio and, and, and the sound of your mixes, of course. Well, I hope that by my sharing my own experience of building this room and hearing the actual difference, I hope it inspires you because, you know, maybe you've got a space in your own home or a space that you're thinking about that you've just always been very hesitant because it's got a terrible sound factor or there's just something about it that doesn't work acoustically. Just know pretty much that you can overwhelm just about anything, man. Empty that room out fill it up with wood, fabric, and diffusion, you may discover that the very best mix room you've ever worked in is in your basement.